But we have a problem with scale. A rush of stories cannot be neatly summed up. Its scales do not nest neatly. They draw attention to interrupting geographies and tempos. These interruptions elicit more stories. Progress itself has often been defined by its ability to make projects expand without changing their framing assumptions. This quality is scalability. Non-scalability elements are contaminated and thus unstable. They refuse to scale up smoothly. To learn anything, we must revitalize art of noticing and include ethnography and natural history. In this spirit, I lead a foray into mushroom forests as anti-plantations. Scalability banishes meaningful diversity. That is, diversity that might change things. Scalability is not an ordinary feature of nature. In the European colonial plantation, Portuguese planters stumbled on a formula for smooth expansion. They crafted self-contained, interchangeable project elements. The plantation of sugarcane. Sugarcane was planted by sticking a cane in the ground and waiting for it to sprout. All the plants were clones. Portuguese cane growing came together with their newly gained power to extract enslaved people from Africa. They had no local social relations and thus no established routes for escape. They were on their way to becoming self-contained and thus standardizable as abstract labor. Like the cane itself, which had no history of either companion species or disease relations in the New World. They were isolated. Plantations were organized to further alienation, for better control. Once central milling operations were started, all operations had to run on the time frame of the mill. Workers had to cut cane as fast as they could and with full attention, just to avoid injury. Under these conditions, workers did, indeed, become self-contained and interchangeable units. Already considered commodities, they were given jobs made interchangeable by the regularity and coordinated timing engineered into the cane. This landscape model of scalability became an inspiration for later industrialization and modernization. Matsutake resists the condition of the plantation. They require the dynamic multi-species diversity of the forest, with its contaminating relationality. Matsutake grows only in deeply disturbed forests. Through its indeterminate growth, the fungus learns the landscape. The fungus gets its carbohydrates from mutualistic relations with the roots of its host trees, for whom it also forages. This transformative mutualism has made it impossible for a human to cultivate Matsutake. Foragers are far from the disciplined, interchangeable laborers of the cane fields. Without disciplined alienation, no scalable corporations form in the forest. In the U.S. Pacific Northwest, foragers flock to the forest following mushroom fever. They're independent finding their way without formal employment. Pickers, buyers and field agents are engaged in dramatic enactments of freedom, as they separately understand it and they exchange these, encouraging each other along with their trophies, money and mushrooms. Matsutake commerce does not occur in some mentioned time before scalability. It is dependent on scalability in ruins. The main distinguishing feature between scalable and non-scalable projects is not ethical conduct, but rather that the latter are more diverse because they are not geared up for expansion. 
It is key to take note of the careers of both scalability and non-scalability. But it would be a huge mistake to assume that scalability is bad and non-scalability is good. New eruptions of non-scalability do not mean that scalability has disappeared. The articulation between scalable accounting and non-scalable workplace relations is increasingly accepted as a model for capitalist accumulation. The challenge for thinking with precarity is to understand the ways projects for making scalability have transformed landscape and society, while also seeing where scalability fails and where non-scalable ecological and economic relations erupt. Can we keep sight of the continuing hegemony of scalability projects while immersing ourselves in the forms and tactics of precarity?